Are you ready, Monarchs fans? It's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Well, nobody expected this, especially the folks down in Miami. Florida International looking to grab the lead in the Conference USA East Division, perhaps looking ahead to this week's game against Florida Atlantic. Instead, the Panthers found an ODU team looking to turn its season around. What happened? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. Oh, we got a crowd. I'm Bruce Rader, along with Coach Bobby Wilder. Five days after the Monarchs snapped Florida International's three-game winning streak with a 37-30 win, your backs were against the wall, but your guys came out to play. Yeah, they did, Bruce. Really proud of everybody in our organization, players and coaches. We got some momentum coming off the win last week at home, and, and you mentioned backs to the wall. We had to have this game. And one thing we've done really well, Bruce, as a program, and our we're in our ninth year now. We're 26-4. and four in November. We're 2-0 and this year, so we've had an ability to practice well. We're getting healthier. We stay focused on the fundamentals, which we need to do, and we played really good football overall in this game against the team, Bruce, that was 6-2, and 4-1 and in the league, and undefeated at home. All right, so many big plays to talk about, but the Panthers got to within a point mm -hmm. in the third quarter, but you made them pay for a botched fake punt that they tried mm -hmm. and Stephen Williams led the offense downfield mm -hmm. for a crucial score going into the final quarter. Yeah, that was a, a huge play in the game, Bruce. We knew up 24-14 at the half. They were going to come out swinging. They're a good football team. They were playing at home. They cut the lead to 24-23 and on that fake punt, fourth and three, they had a good play, good design. Miles Fox our defensive tackle was on the field. We had our defense on the field. We call it safe. We're trying to be safe. Ten of our defensive players and our return are back deep. So we're going to give up the return to defend a fake. And Miles Fox made a phenomenal play, got the momentum back. Stevie gets a completion. Ray Lowry a big run. Ray takes it in from one. Now we're back up 31-23 going into the fourth quarter. That was a huge momentum shift in that game. The big plays you've been talking about all mm. season. And then as Florida International looks to make a yep. final drive, your defense recovers another fumble. Mm -hmm. Freshman kicker Nick Rice, who's mm -hmm. from Florida, right. where you were playing with his third mm -hmm. field goal of the game, and you pull mm -hmm. off the upset. Yeah, back-to-back -back turnovers, Bruce. We, they were driving down 31-23 with 12 minutes to go. Daniel Apu makes a strip sack. Pat Toller, D-tackle, recovers. We take it down, get a field goal, take the clock down to seven minutes. They drive again. Jordan Young, our outstanding redshirt freshman linebacker that's really come on this year, goes out and makes a phenomenal play on the best receiver in the league, Owens. He strips him on the tackle. JoJo Heaton picks it up, takes it back 28 yards. Another Nick Rice field goal, and we took the clock down, Bruce, to a minute 20. So we're up 37-23. Nick Rice, you mentioned three for three. Bruce, he's 13 for 15 on the year for field goals. Having a big year for us. Boy, is he? He's only a freshman. The running game mm. was on two. Ray Lowry, 168 yards, two touchdowns. He was mm -hmm. the Conference USA Player of the Week. Yeah, and deservedly so, Bruce. And another three catches and a touchdown catch in this game. He accounted for three touchdowns in this game. He's still not completely, completely healthy. As you know, Bruce, he missed six games at the early part of the year with a torn hamstring. Then he got the hip pointer after a 170-yard game against Western Kentucky. He's starting to get healthier, and he was deserved of this player of the, of the week. Outstanding performance. Well, coming up on Saturday, Rice comes to SB Ballard Stadium with mm -hmm. only one win, riding an eight-game losing streak. They are playing out the string of another disappointing year. Their coach's job may be on the line. They're going to be hungry. They are, Bruce, and what an incredible story this year for Rice. You and I were talking before the show. They, they open against Stanford in Australia. They've played the toughest non-league schedule in our league. Bruce, they can't fly home from Australia because of the hurricane that hit Houston. They got coaches, players flooded out of their apartments, houses. They lost vehicles. They couldn't go to school for 10 days. They had to go to TCU, Bruce, and spend the first week. This past week was, I think, their best game of the year. They rushed for 254 yards against a good Southern Miss team. They have the leading tackler in the league. They have the leader in sacks and TFLs. This will be a major challenge Saturday. They're just like you guys, backs against the wall. Against the wall. On the road. But mm -hmm. still to come, before senior Josh Mariner moves on from he's ODU, so he's going to enter the one-minute drill uh, with Brian Parsons coming up next. He's no one run onto the field. You
I'm Brian Parsons. Welcome back to the Old Dominion Football Show, the One Minute Drill. We have senior running back Josh Mariner, who's from Western Branch High School in Chesapeake. Josh, let's talk about the Bahamas Bowl last year. Hopefully there's a bowl on the horizon this year. What was what was the biggest, the most fun of being in the Bahamas last year? Being able to be around my team for the whole entire week. We were able to stay together. Usually we don't get to stay together because we stay in different houses. And just stay together and do various activities and practice and just enjoy that experience together. It was a phenomenal experience. What's your major? I'm getting my master's in public administration. So what is life after football for Josh Mariner? Life after football is hopefully law school next uh, August. So we're going to see. So when you look over on the sidelines and you see Ron Whitcomb doing his crazy play calling give me an impersonation of, of some of those some of the moves that he has uh all right so Wickham runs out to the numbers all right wait 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 he's so energetic and i love it but uh that's what one thing that Wickham is always known to do he's known to run onto the field give the signal and be very energetic about it but it's one thing we love about him so <laughs> josh what is your favorite thing about being a monarch my favorite thing about being a Monarch is being able to be a part of a great team in my hometown. That's one of the best things that I have to feel. Josh Mariner has passed the one minute drill with aces. Say goodbye to the Monarch Nation. Goodbye, Monarch Nation. See you out there. Coach, I remember Josh when he was a highly recruited mm, player sure at Western Branch High School in Chesapeake. Yeah. He's the kind of young man you want on your team. No question. Got his undergraduate degree, Bruce, at the University of Connecticut. Did it in three years. Now he's getting his master's degree at Old Dominion. Dean's List student. He's on our leadership council. He's clearly one of the most respected players on our football team. And he's a great special teams player for us who's a good backup running back. He's an absolute pleasure to have in our program. And he's a local guy. We love that. Exactly. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about your quarterback. The Old Dominion Football Show continues. Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder. Was last week's mm -hmm. game down in Miami the best so far for your young quarterback, Stephen Williams? It was, Bruce, the best he's played overall. Keep in mind, this was the second week that we haven't turned the ball over on offense, getting much better with the ball. He was 17 for 24, 240 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He ran the ball well, and, Bruce, he checked plays that we needed to have check and we're going to need that this weekend this is a huge game for us bruce saturday this is the 68th annual oyster bowl it's military appreciation day which will have the flyover for this one which is always exciting and it's our senior day bruce last home game for 14 seniors that we have in the program that bruce this is the first class that's gone all the way through the transition so players like melvin vaughn that have been all the way through it it's a special moment for them also in their last football game so we're going to need the 12th monarchs out there loud and proud this and I, saturday and i know how you are on senior day you, oh, it's you emotional. generally yeah. let the emotions yeah, uh, come through yeah it's a hard one bruce because these kids are they're your family and thinking this is the last home game they're going to play makes it makes it a tough day all right. The Monarchs are coming off their biggest win of the year behind a career best game from Stephen Williams. Big game last week for Ray Lowry. It's a 2 o'clock kickoff at SB Ballard Stadium. Good luck, Coach. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate it. See you it. next week, everybody. Bye.